A Plump and Perky Turkey Written by Teresa Bateman Illustrated by Jeff Shelley The people in Squawk Valley were downhearted and depressed. Thanksgiving was approaching, but without a special guest. They couldn't find a turkey for the feast they planned to eat. It looked like they'd be making do with a bowl of shredded wheat. A plump and perky turkey's what we need, they all agreed. But finding turkeys nowadays is very hard indeed. The birds have gotten smarter, and they all seem quite aware that it's best to disappear when the autumn leaves are in the air. A plump and perky turkey. Stomachs rumbled at the thought. But how to trick a turkey into jumping in the pot? Then Ebenezer Beezer had a thought pop in his head. If we can't find a turkey, let's have one find us instead. We could hold an arts and crafts fair, he declared with wink and grin. A fair with one grand turkey prize that all of us could win. And since our goal is turkey, that's the theme we'll take to heart. We'll fill our fair with folks and fur and tons of turkey art. We'll make turkeys out of spuds and out of clay and out of rope. We'll make turkeys out of oatmeal, out of paper, out of soap. We'll hang a bunch of posters in the forest way down low to invite some turkey candidates to model for our show. Why, even turkeys understand, as everybody knows. You can't make turkey art without a turkey there to pose. The people in Squawk Valley held a poster jamboree. They plastered their creations onto every single tree. Now, it happened in Squawk Valley lived a turkey known as Pete. He was cocky, he was clever, and he really liked to eat. While he strutted through the forest, plump and perky through the pines, he was startled and intrigued by all those interesting signs. With a proud and jaunty gobble, he gave out a hearty cry, a plump and perky turkey. Well, I'm sure I qualify. Pete applied for the position and he strutted plump and proud. He could hardly wait to model for the large and eager crowd. You're hired, shouted Beezer, for the folks they all agreed that Pete the perky turkey was the answer to their need. Twas the week before Thanksgiving when Pete posed to do his part, and the artsy craftsy townsfolk started making turkey art. They made turkeys out of spuds, and out of clay, and out of rope. They made turkeys out of oatmeal, out of paper, out of soap. Thanksgiving Day, the artwork done, they asked the model down to judge their homemade turkeys and to pick the best in town. Now when the judging's over, Beezer whispered with a smile, we'll tuck that model turkey in the oven for a while. Pete judged each piece of artwork as the hungry crowd all cheered. He stopped to take a closer look and then he disappeared. There were turkeys made of spuds there were turkeys made of rope. There were turkeys made of paper. There were turkeys made of soap. The room was full of turkeys in a wall-to-wall -wall collage. For a clever bird like Pete, it was a perfect camouflage. He's over here, old Beezer said. He's here, said Jacob Green. They searched amongst the turkeys but their bird had fled the scene. A note in turkey scrawl they found half hidden on the lawn. 
Goodbye. I took my modeling fee. The oatmeal bird was gone. The people in Squawk Valley were left feeling rather blue. The only turkeys left in town appeared too hard to chew. Oh well, said Beezer brightly as they gathered round to eat. Right now at least I'm thankful that we still have shredded wheat. That day folks learned a lesson that stuck firm with them forever. A plump and perky turkey can be pretty doggone clever. Thanks for listening and don't forget to subscribe. Want to check out the last story we read? Here's the link. Do you have a favorite book that you want read aloud? Leave it in the comments below.